Welcome to today's edition of the webinar series focused on owner managed businesses. I'm Tom Philby. I'm an insurance and disputes resolution partner, and I sit on a cross sector group focused on emerging digital assets. Today, I'll spend the next 20 minutes or so um, looking at the world of digital assets, um, which includes cryptocurrencies and NFTs and that sort of thing. And we'll look a bit at um, the UK's aspirations and potential new law reforms um, concerning digital assets and what this might mean for businesses, your businesses in the UK. Uh, hopefully there'll be a short period at the end for, for, for Q&A. Um, can't guarantee that, but in any events, um, please do post any questions you might have in the chat box along with your contact details and either I'll address them at the end or by follow-up email. Um, and, and don't worry, you can ask embarrassing questions, only we at Mills and Reeve get to see them. So sort of kicking off, um, even though we're only in March, um, the sprinkling of snow yesterday has put me into a, a rather festive mood. And so I wanted to begin with a genuine Christmas story. So just before Christmas gone, my daughter went to see a Robin Hood panto with school. When she got home, she told me that in the first scene, Robin was handing out some gold coins he had stolen from the rich. Um, it's probably some kind of mid-market business owner, I imagine. One of the beneficiaries of these coins noticed that his coin had teeth marks in it and said, well, what's this? To which Robin replied, it's Bitcoin. Now, the first point to take away from this, this joke is that it was recounted to me by an eight-year-old. Now, if a child is understanding jokes about Bitcoin, um, this is clearly an indication that, that crypto and crypto-related assets are something that we can't afford to ignore. They're increasingly part of the mainstream, which in turn inevitably means that they are something that those in business will need to get to grips with too. And I would say that this is particularly so where mid-year last year, the UK government declared an ambition to, quote, turn the UK into a global hub for crypto asset technology and investment. And more recently, last December, also announced a set of reforms via the Financial Services and Markets Bill to foster the adoption of cutting edge technologies to bring certain crypto assets and activities within the scope of UK regulation. And that bill will be considered um, this spring, I believe. And also in January, the Treasury told MPs of plans to introduce a digital pound or a central bank digital currency um, this one dubbed the Britcoin, and you may have heard of that in the and seen it in the newspapers. And the intention would be that this Britcoin is used alongside traditional cash. And this could all happen possibly as soon as 2024. So there's therefore clear momentum behind the introduction of digital assets and new technologies into the UK business landscape. The second takeaway from the joke is that the gold coin was physical and tangible property that Robin could hold in his hands and bite. This is not something you can do with Bitcoin. Like other cryptocurrency, NFTs or land in the metaverse, Bitcoin is intangible and exists pretty much only as a digital concept in the ether. But does that digital quality mean that digital assets should not have the same level of rights and protections as real life property, such as your office premises or the widgets that you might produce. Now that's been the subject of much debate in many jurisdictions um, all across the world. Um, but the UK and the English courts have been taking some bold steps in, in moving this debate forwards. But a problem with these assets is that unlike the gold coin, they don't fit neatly with any of the existing categories of property under English law. And this has led to uncertainty over what rights and protections, if any, they can benefit from. Um, and, that, and that's the uncertainty that the um, Law Commission um, has been seeking to address. And earlier this year, they published 
a 550 page consultation paper around digital assets, um, which is expected to result in formal proposals later this year. Um, and what they are likely to say is that digital assets should represent a new, new form of personal property that has all the rights and protections of traditional property. And that in turn is likely to lead to development and clarification on other issues, such as in relation to the taxation of digital assets um, and what happens on insolvency, death or divorce and, and other cheery stuff like that. Again, this could represent a fundamental step towards digital assets becoming a part of ordinary business as well as personal life in the UK. So taking a step back, what exactly is a digital asset? This is an umbrella term that covers a, a number of non-tangible assets in, in digital forms, and it can include databases, software, domain names, and crypto tokens. And it's this last one, crypto tokens, that um, the UK government and the, the Law Commission have been paying particular interest to. Um, and that's where the real sort of focus towards innovative business um, development um, has, has, has focused. So let's just pause here for a moment and take a brief look at, at some of these crypto tokens. So first of all, there's cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ether, which I'm sure you've heard about. These are digital currencies intended to be used like traditional pounds or dollars but obviously only exist in intangible digital form. Most cryptocurrencies are underpinned by a blockchain, which is effectively um, a, a ledger that keeps an open record of all transactions and is intended to provide security and, and certainty. A, a degree of visibility and evidence of transfer that you don't get if, let's say, Alice hands Bob a 10 pound note in the street. Just go to Bitcoin, uh, sorry, blockchain.com, um, uh, which you can sort of see a screenshot of on the slide. And you can actually see all of these transactions in action, um, such as the transparency. As to the uses of cryptocurrency, well, it can be used to purchase goods or services online. And maybe some of you have been involved in that. Um, but obviously they become sort of in increasingly known as um, a form of investment or, or currency trading, you might put it, um, in the alternative to, to the usual traditional ways of investing um, your, your operating profits. Um, so you can, for instance, pay your British pounds into a crypto exchange, convert them into your cryptocurrency of choice, and then hold on to those crypto in a digital wallet um, sit back and hope that they will rise in value before you cash them back into to pounds. Then you also have um, NFTs or non-fungible tokens, another form of crypto token. Um, these are digital certificates typically linked to data, um, such as data representing digital artwork, but NFTs can also be linked to um, real life property um, and they can have many uses um, such as recording and evidencing debt security arrangements, that type of stuff. Um, and, and even in San Marino, um, aside from being fantastic at football, um, they've even created digital COVID certificates in the form of NFTs so that all the data can be stored on the blockchain ledger to create a reliable and traceable set of records. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see what can be done with these. Um, NFTs can represent evidence of a broad range of rights in underlying assets. Um, most commonly, that will be representing a certificate of authenticity and ownership of the underlying asset. What you see on the, the slide here is a page from um, OpenSea. And that's an online market where you can buy or sell NFT art, um, or more precisely, buy or sell NFTs linked to a digital artwork. Um, you can see on the slide, you've got um, a board ape here. 
and I apologise now for this um, this having been flagged as a board monkey in uh, in the slides, but this is a um, officially known as a board ape. Um, this board ape um, at the time as we're putting up the slide was um, currently on auction at a reserve price of seventy one ether or about ninety five thousand um, dollars. Now I could just right click on this image of the board ape and I could copy and paste it and I could have it on my desktop background forever and for free. But what I wouldn't be able to say is that I am the owner of that digital artwork. What I could do, however, is potentially acquire an NFT crypto token issued by the creator of the board ape that evidences my ownership of that asset and then record um, that NFT and that digital certificate of ownership um, onto the blockchain um, for all to see as proof of my ownership. The NFT itself would be held in a digital wallet, uh, much like cryptocurrency is. And then with that NFT, I can transfer it or sell it to someone else, um, much in the same way that if you've got a Picasso or Van Gogh lying around, you could try and sell it down the pub. NFTs work in the same way. Obviously, one big question is, why pay $95,000 for this? Equally, why pay £30 million for that Picasso painting? Um, or a Mondrian painting, which uh, with a ruler and a decent set of paints, I'm pretty sure I could recreate to a, to a standard close to the original, a bit like a copy and paste of a digital image. Short point is there are many reasons, um, good or bad, um, why one might want to pay a lot of money for for a board ape um, but one mustn't underestimate the value of of bragging rights of being the owner or sole controller of something that others admire also emerging is the metaverse um, that's a developing digital world an ecosystem that seeks to be parallel to our real life world um, it's not strictly a digital asset in itself um, but it's a platform on which digital assets can exist um, and where they can be um, in due course or currently bought and sold. Um, now, you can see why I like the metaverse, um, because it's it's made me look way better than I've ever looked in my in my life um, through this avatar that's been generated. Um, so I'm obviously a big fan. In this metaverse, um, buying a digital artwork um, from a website of like, like, let's say, OpenSea, like we've just seen, that could suddenly become um, an immersive experience, um, equivalent to, to walking into a gallery in Fitzrovia and buying a piece of art hanging off the wall. Alternatively, I could be speaking to you right now in a VR reality environment and seeing all of your little personalised avatar faces, including yours, Bob, um, fast asleep in row five. So returning to, to the Law Commission, um, in part because I'm a lawyer, so I like law stuff, um, but also because their proposed reforms are being hailed as representing a seismic shift in the attitude towards digital assets um, in the UK. Um, it's important to have an idea of what's going on here. The Law Commission has recognised, um, as I said before, that the types of digital assets I've just mentioned are, to those that embrace them, just as important as real life and physical property. And as such, they ought to attract the same level of rights and protections as traditional property. Presently, there are two um, categories at law of personal property. Um, firstly, things in possession, um, being tangible objects you can possess, like a gold coin. And then there are things in action, um, bundles of personal rights over property, such as the right to um, enforce and receive payment of a debt. But the Law Commission says that neither of these categories satisfact satisfactorily accommodates the, the new and emerging um, class of digital assets, which are neither tangible, nor do they represent a bundle of, uh, of rights. The key overarching proposal for the consultation is, in the Law Commission's own words, it's the um, 
explicit recognition of a third category of personal property, which would allow a more nuanced consideration of new emergent and idiosyncratic objects of property rights. Now, this third category would comprise data objects, um, as the Law Commission describes them. Um, the definition is fiendishly complex. You can see the three limbs on the slide. I don't propose to dissect them here. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty horrible to get your head around. Um, but what the Law Commission has made clear is that crypto tokens, such as cryptocurrencies and F NFTs, satisfy the relevant criteria and should be treated as data objects. Other things like digital media files don't. Um, the Law Commission has also observed that traditional concepts of, um, of, of property um, are founded on the notion of possessing something, but the possession is an ill fit for digital assets. Instead, the Commission says that the notion of control is more appropriate. Um, it's also sort of worth highlighting that the, the Law Commission recognises, um, and because you may have heard about this in, in, in the press as well, um, they, they've recognised the admirable steps that the English courts have already taken to strive to recognise um, cryptocurrencies, um, and most recently NFTs as well, as property under common law rules. So even before the Law Commission consultation, the English courts have exercised some judicial yoga in um, enabling things like freezing injunctions to be exercised over stolen crypto, something that's only available in respect to property. Um, and, and that's something that, that me and my team have, have, have done, albeit out of the Isle of Man courts, um, where in one case we had um, a corporate services company that was acting for a business owner who was investing his operating profits into crypto. Um, his, his corporate services company was induced into sending Bitcoin um, to, um, to a fraudster. Um, we then traced that to a Seychelles um, crypto exchange and obtained freezing injunctions and disclosure orders. Again, none of which would have been possible if Bitcoin were not recognized by the courts as property. Um, but in spite of this nimbleness of our judiciary, the Law Commission has observed that law reform that, that seeks to make it clear whether and what digital assets are or are not property would avoid the need to try to hammer square pegs into round holes um, in order to achieve sensible and commercial justice. So it seems inevitable that some law reform um, will result from this um, Law Commission um, consultation and that this will have a significant impact on the ability of the courts to manage disputes in relation to digital assets um, and for owners or controllers of these assets, which could one day be standard businesses across the UK, to protect and enforce their rights against the world, as they can already do in respect of traditional property. So what does this all mean for businesses in the UK? Well, I should firstly clarify that, um, as, as may be apparent, um, I'm not Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, um, or indeed Nostradamus. I'm just a humble lawyer. So my ability to forecast what transformational business will look like in five or 10 years time is perhaps doubtful at the very best. Um, but what I do see um, through what the English courts have been doing, what's coming through from the Financial and Service Markets Bill and the Law Commission consultation is a real momentum and commitment um, behind the desire to create a legal and regulatory environment that embraces digital assets and is looking to facilitate that integration into our personal and business lives. As such, Whatever your view might be on board apes and Bitcoin, my prediction is that digital assets will flourish in the UK in coming years and will be something which many, if not all businesses, will have to become familiar with, um, whether at this stage they want to or not. What this might look like in practice, 
um, that's likely to change significantly over time. Firstly, though, I feel that one thing that's very likely to emerge is the mainstream use of cryptocurrencies. Now, as mentioned before, there's um, there are already sort of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, which, given their potential to make big gains, have, at least until recently, become really quite popular as alternative investments for, for businesses looking to invest their profits. That may well continue. Um, and it may evolve, evolve as, as, as businesses become more used to dealing with digital assets as the regulatory framework and protections around them develop as well. But it's also that volatility of, of these presently unregulated cryptocurrencies that could cause them to lose some of their appeal over time. And in this regard, a more stable and official central bank digital currency or CBDC um, like the so-called Britcoin, um, could, in my view, become a real game changer. Um, it could end up replacing cash or electronic transfers in routine business-to-business -business or consumer-to-business transactions. There is, in that regard, obviously the appeal to a new generation of customer, client, or business partner, um, where they've grown up already throughout their lives in the digital world, and may readily embrace the, the, the change and in innovation represented by digital assets. But there's also the fact that in bypassing the banks, digital currencies are said to have the ability to significantly speed up payments and reduce cross-border transaction costs. And they have the additional security of each transaction being recorded on an independently maintained ledger like the blockchain. Um, and that kind of record can also translate into an ability to obtain accurate financial data as your business is trading with real time back office reconciliations. So there are potentially lots of good reasons why you as a business um, or your customers may want to be doing business using digital currencies. And there might even be a risk that those businesses that don't adapt may find that they lose a competitive and profit-making advantage. Outside of cryptocurrencies, I think another um, thing to come out of this is going to be the mainstream and, and dynamic use of, of NFTs. So again, it's not just all about board eight artwork. I've already mentioned San Marino's use of, of NFTs to record and track COVID certificates. Now, the way I see it, there's no reason why NFTs couldn't similarly be used to create a readily searchable, reliable and tamper proof almost um, record of the, the sale and purchase of goods, for instance, um, the passing of, of ownership and risk from one party to another, or to document a contractual agreement that's been made business to business. Again, the use of NFTs or, or something similar to them could become an increasing feature of commercial and consumer transactions. And again, may require businesses to adapt and embrace these new practices in order to remain um, competitive and relevant. So as digital assets and the technology underlying them evolve, um, within the safety of um, the legal and, and regulatory framework that's developing, there ought to be plenty of opportunities that are likely to arise. Um, of course, in mentioning opportunities, um, any kind of transformative innovation um, like this is also necessarily going to present some challenges and considerations um, for, for, for businesses. Um, it might be a bit premature to sort of get too much into these so i'll keep it very high level i think there will be a crystallization of issues as the current reforms start coming through um, but at a very high level um, it seems to me that businesses that become involved with digital assets will need to start um, thinking about and getting to grips with issues um, such as firstly investment in technology to support the interaction with digital assets um, understanding how these systems operate and indeed where their weaknesses might lie. And 
the associated investment in um, talent and um, in staff in order to keep up to speed with what could be a rapidly changing environment. Um, and, and also fair say, to, to be able to spot competitive and profit making opportunities along the way. Um, I mentioned regulatory, navigating that landscape um, as it evolves around crypto and other digital assets will also become critical to certain businesses, particularly those um, operating within the financial services sphere. I would say also, particularly um, given sort of my wearing my insurance hat, um, don't overlook um, sort of matters like simply ensuring that you've got suitable insurance in place. So, for instance, many commercial crime policies at the moment um, have specific exclusions in relation to crypto assets. Um, it will also be important to um, a board that its directors and officers liability insurance is fit for purpose, particularly if the board starts making bold decisions in respect of new assets and new technology. You need that comfort blanket there of insurance to operate um, freely and with, with, with less, less risk. And of course, um, can't mention any considerations without um, the fundamental one sort of being how do we deal with digital assets from an accounting and finance perspective? And what are the, the corporate tax implications of, of, let's say, investing profits in crypto assets um, or, or simply conducting business with crypto um, forming part of the um, part of the transaction as opposed to traditional currency? Um, the sort of things that, that some of my colleagues much cleverer than me um, are, are following and advising on. So just sort of drawing this uh, really to a close, the, the reality is that no one really knows what this is all going to look like in a few years time. Um, but what is certain from my perspective is that whether in the form of cryptocurrencies, NFTs, um, or, or something that's still the seed of an idea in someone's mind, um, digital assets will become an increasing feature of doing business in and from the UK. So whilst we're perhaps in a, in a, in a watch this space um, kind of moment um, right now, it seems to me that we're heading pretty fast towards a position where gaining some understanding, familiarity around digital assets is becoming increasingly important. And what I would in, in, encourage is that business owners and, and managers and, and those supporting them um, start now to familiarize themselves with what's going on with these emerging assets um, and the likely forms of, of um, legal property that, um, that, that, that will emerge from them. And yeah, what the opportunities or maybe even necessities um, um, are. This ultimately is a huge and complex area, um, too much for a, a short webinar like this. Um, but, but what I do hope you come away with from, from this session is a bit more knowledge around this space, um, if you needed it, um, and some food for thought on how digital assets may impact on UK businesses now or in the future. Um, indeed, your business. Um, so it, it just leaves me really to say um, many thanks for, for listening. Um, I can see that there are um, some questions that have um, um, that have come in. Um, I think sort of in the, um, I mean, there, there's there's one um, here, for instance. Um, sorry, it's, I think you probably saw some of the questions pop on the screen. Um, uh, is is there any case law on previous disputes to view? Um, the answer is um, yes. I mean, almost the simplest thing is to um, Google. Um, so some of the leading cases, um, you had the case of um, Robertson versus Persons Unknown uh, back in 2019, um, which concerned the, um, uh, in fact, that was the, the owner of a a, a crypto um, company having been duped into sending um, Bitcoin um, to fraudsters. Um, and that case um, invited the court, pretty sort of groundbreaking in um, trying to exercise that, that, that judicial yoga that I mentioned before um, in 
um, determining whether crypto was property over which the court was then able to grant um, relief, such as freezing injunctions. Um, you've got other cases like AA and Persons Unknown. That's a, um, an insurance related matter relating to um, ransomware payments, which may well be a problem for your businesses. Um, increasingly, that's coming up. And again, that's in relation to um, trying to trace and then um, block and recover payments that have been made by way of ransomware, um, if it's um, desirable to do that. Um, there's a flurry of other cases. There's one I've been involved in, um, sort of the, the Isle of Man. There are others, Iron Science, uh, I won't bore you with this, which looks at disclosure orders. Um, there's a whole load. But effectively, there's lots of material online that you can view to understand what that 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 um, what that looks like. Um, what I would say is thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much um, and enjoy the rest of your days. <laughs>